the Thoughty or Tea podcast. I mean, I, I, I would say I do have my own routines, but they're not quite like that. You know, it's like I'll have my coffee at a certain, it's not necessarily the certain time every day. It's not really time based. Mm. It's just like I do have, I have certain things worked into my routine or like meditation practice. But meditation's big. Like, I, uh, my, my degree was in biomedical sciences. And when I was doing that, I, uh, I did a lot of research into meditation. I was trying, I was trying very much at that period of my life to fix my brain, you know, with all the, the mental health difficulties that I have to, to deal with. I, I'd been going through psychotherapy routes since I was 14, uh, to no result really. And so I kind of, I was looking for ways to sort of improve myself. And one of the, one of the ways that I wanted to do that was meditation. And it actually does like have physical changes on your brain. Like I think, I think they did like a, a research study on monks and like compared their brains to the brains of people who don't meditate as much. They meditate like two or three hours a day or something. And they showed like growth in, in certain areas of the brain uh, just from doing meditation over and over each day for like years. Um, I think it was to do with like the, the prefrontal cortex, maybe, maybe reduction of the amygdala, which is the pre prefrontal cortex is what we consider to be like the center of our like higher intelligence and brain, our decision making. Uh, whereas the amygdala is kind of this you know, monkey minds, kind of emotional brain that just keeps us safe and, you know, makes, makes us feel the anxiety and the fear and things like that, uh, which is important for survival, but it's not, not so good in our, in a mod modern time. And, um, so meditation, you know, like it's, it's definitely like proven to be effective for a lot of people. That's awesome. I can ag agree with that <laughs> and attest to that. But I do. What's your uh, schedule like? Well, I do a specific. It's not necessarily. I mean, I do meditations as well using an app that I really like called Moon X. But also, I do Gongyo every day, which is part of my Buddhist practice with SGI. And I, I'm not familiar with, with those terms. Okay, so SGI is an organization that uh, began in Japan under Nishiren. And let's see if I can give you a little background on it. <laughs> it's based on the, the teachings of the 13th century Japanese monk Nishiren. Mm -hmm. um, it's distinctive for its focus on the Lotus Sutra as the ultimate Buddhist scripture. Um, our central practice is chanting the mantra Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, which loosely translates to I devote myself to the Lotus Sutra or I devote myself to the mystic law of cause and effect, basically through sound or through vibration. And by chanting the mantra, um, we believe that we can tap into our inherent Buddha nature in our own lives and discover our highest potential. So I'm just having a look at the uh, the website. It says that the word the word gongyo literally means to exert oneself in practice. Uh, one gongyo is a short ceremony which enables us to celebrate our inherent Buddhahood. I love that word <laughs> and Me too. offer prayers of gratitude and determination for for whatever is relevant to us at any particular time. Yes. Yeah. So can you read Japanese or do you have like a uh, Yeah, so I have my book and it is in Japanese, but it also has wow. the English translation in the beginning. So we actually chant in Japanese every day from two chapters of the Lotus Sutra. The second. That's awesome. And the 16th chapters. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So we do um, Gongyo, but I also just chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo if I feel I need to during the day. 
And that's had a profound impact on my life. I feel more peaceful and more grounded when I do my chanting. And it usually just takes about five to 10 minutes a day. So it's not a huge time commitment, but the effects that it has on my life, I felt substantially. Awesome. If I if I just give it a little bit of a background for sort of my my experience with religion, uh, my my parents, well, my mom is um, describes herself as Christian, kind of more towards like the agnostic kind of side of things, whereas my dad is like a diehard atheist. And I've been to church a few times in my in my life. I had a Catholic friend who I went to the ch- the church with them once. Um, they told they told me that anyone who didn't believe in God uh, was going to go to hell, and that they were inherently an evil person. And so I I told my dad after swimming practice one time that I'd been to this church, and they told me that he's evil, and uh, he wasn't very happy about that. So um, he he uh, he, exp- he explained to me about like you know what, what religion is and and how. You know, just because someone tells you that something is a certain way, it doesn't always mean it. And everyone has their own kind of different beliefs, uh, ways of interpreting the world. Um, his being kind of the more atheistic kind. I I did have quite a big interest in Buddhism when I was younger. I think it's more about like the 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 teachings of it, like non attachment, like. Not not being as a, as a, as attached to things in your life, and so not not experiencing the the pain when something bad happens with it, or you don't have that thing in your life anymore. That that was kind of one one of the things that I saw, and it was also, you know, I I kind of, I, I suppose I, I very much like the aesthetic of it and like the focus around peace and serenity and kind of meditation and things like that. So I did. I did a bit of research into it, kind of into. I did a, a philosophy and ethics course at my school. Uh, learned a bit more about kind of the the roots of of Buddhism. But I th- I think mostly for for a lot of my life, I've been fairly secular with things. You know, I do, I don't believe that there is an afterlife. I don't believe that there is a um, supernatural being. Um, I don't, you know, I, I firmly root myself in what I know and what I don't know and what I don't know, I don't think about. Um, so that's, that's me. <laughs> um, I, I would really like to, to know obviously from, from your side, cause I remember you saying that you grew up in quite a religious kind of conservative environment. Um, and I definitely admire you for not uh, having a religious doctrine too, because I think, well, we'll get into this in a second, but <laughs> I, I have very strong views, I guess, um, because of my upbringing about religion and kind of its role sure. in people's lives and things like that. So 